Now all the junk scrubbed off, time to do some assembly. Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Got a couple of little things to finish up on the chuck before I can assemble it. These uh, outer edges are kind of beat up and I want to file those down and get those all smoothed up. And I also want to take some of this rust off the back, so I'm just going to use the wire wheel. Make sure you wear your stuff. Yeah, that got rid of the rough spots on that. Now we'll work on this face. Not as bad. But it's been dinged up. You can see the high spots there. Toolmaker that used to work for me, Paul Pouchet, called those Dutchmen. He was French, and to him, a Dutchman was Deutsch. German. And any German was a bad thing. But he retired at the age of 65. Let's see, that would have been 1985, 86. So he was around in the bad old days. Okay, that's kind of flat now. Let's see if I got any raised spots on the ways. Now, ideally, I would pick this back up. I would make a cut like that and then pick it back up. But I'm just being lazy. That looks pretty good. I was having some trouble getting these jaws to go in. One of them is fairly small. They should be stamped saying which jaw goes where because the body of the chuck is stamped one, two, and three. Now, I would love to be able to see on this. There it is. No, that's five, three. Let's see if this one says five, two. That says two. And that says one. Ha, ah, they are stamped. Good. Just a little odd place to put it, but it's right there. I said earlier that these chuck jaws are fitted to the chuck. This is the number one chuck jaw. And that's supposed to fit in that part of the chuck. There's been some pounding on the edges of this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the damaged corners. The outer edges of this way have been hit. I can see the marks there. Take some of this 600 grit sandpaper that I have glued to this little steel bar. And I'll polish that up a bit. Now it's fitting. 
That's one. This is jaw number two. And this is number three. Perfect. Okay. Now I've got the filing done. some assembly. I was looking for dry slide because I wanted dry slide to put into the chucks. Dry slide doesn't pick up dirt like oil does. Oil tends to grab onto it and hold it. Dry slide is a thin film of uh, molybdenum disulfide I think it is. I don't know if they even have it on here anymore. Heptane, cyclohexane, petroleum solvent, and propane. That's just the drivers. Well, the thing I like about it, it says lubricates blades and bits, won't attract dust, great for table saws, drills, and lathes. Back when I was a kid, that was during the Vietnam War, the AR-15, or the M-16 at the time, which was the military version, uh, was a great little gun, uh, but it had a problem. It got dirty, and when it got dirty, it jammed. So, the companies that made the AR-15 came up with ways to make it so that it wouldn't jam. And one of those ways was to use dry slide. Dry slide lubricant, like the name implies, as a dry film lubricant. I couldn't find dry slide. I found WD-40 Specialist Dirt and Dust Resistant Dry Lube PTFE spray. I don't know what PTFE is. I could look it up but I haven't done it. Anyways, what I'm going to do is just lubricate this with this dry film lubricant There we go. Had it at a bit of an angle. That bearing is very high tolerance, so no allowance for slip. Now I'll run that little set screw down in there and that will keep that little pin in place. And it is a tiny little set screw. Now that in place, why 
One, two, three. I'm just gonna loosely put these screws in. When I get it uh, fully assembled, I'll slip it onto the lathe and do a final tightening on these things when I've got it held on the spindle. It'll be a little easier to pull them tight and I wanna make sure that I get them consistent. these holes in the chuck are through holes. <clears throat> but the adapter plate, there's only one that has a through hole. This one. So when I put this on, I'm going to put that through hole over the fine thread Allen bolt. And I'm going to slip the nut on it. I'm not going to torque it down, I'm just going to slide it on there and slip the nut over it. That way it'll stay together while I go finish the final assembly. Make sure you got all the bolts started before you tighten anything down. Okay. Those are all spun up. I can slip these nuts on there. That's the fine thread bolt. That's already got his fine thread nut on it. If you look closely, you can see that the screw thread is coming through that way right there. That's the number one slot. You want to start the number one chuck jaw in first. You just see the thread coming through there. I back it off, slide the chuck jaw in until it goes up against the scroll. I don't have to push it up tight, I just have to make sure that it's seated up against the thread of the scroll. Now I turn the scroll and the thread engages the chuck jaw. Then I bring it around until it just shows in the number two slot and I slip the number two jaw in. Same way I did the number one. Then I turn it and it catches. Then I do the same thing for the number three. Bring it up until I see it, back it off, slide the jaw in, now I have all three jaws in place and they will go in in unison and there we are 
One chuck fully assembled. And during my cleaning, once I got the patina off the face of the chuck, this faint little stamping here, Skinner Jr. 5 inch, 5805. That's the size, that's the name of the company that made it, and that's the part number. So now I can be looking for a set of jaws for a Skinner Jr. 5 inch, number 5805. I looked on eBay, there were four and a halfs and sixes, but no fives. Doesn't mean that they aren't out there. They're probably in somebody's junk drawer. Skinner brand has been around for a long, long time. It started in the late 1800s. If you're interested, you can look up Skinner Manufacturing Company. Now we've got the chuck all cleaned up. It operates much, much better. Before this, I had to have it on the lathe and I had to really put both hands on the chuck key to make it move. Much, much better. And it was all just junk. I knew that it was full of crap and I just hadn't taken the time to fix it. Now I can run it back and forth without even a T in there. That's how you disassemble, clean, and reassemble a Skinner 5805 5-inch 5 3-jaw scroll chuck. It's actually kind of easy. I, I spent a lot more time on it than most people would, mostly because I wanted to make sure I got the video right. And also, uh, I'm kind of fussy that way. Now that I have the chuck all taken care of, i already taken this one apart and cleaned it. I need to make a rack for them. I want to set them so that they don't take up so much room. So I'm going to make a V-rack so that I can set them on the bench and not have them roll off. But that'll be another video. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.